Today we're comparing some of the most popular wedges from 2021. We've got five models and I've got Danny here to hit some shots. We're gonna use TrackMan to compare them all and see the differences. Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf and today I'm joined by Danny Farrell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we're comparing wedges from 2021. We've got five of the most popular here in fittings this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, get us started here, kind of give us the rundown on the models and um, you know why, I guess, why these five are in here. Sure, sure. So kind of working our way, we'll talk about forgiveness first. So Cleveland, the RTX Zipcore, gonna be more of a cavity backside wedge. Okay, mm -hmm. so I expect that to be the more forgiving Ball speed will probably be a little bit hotter coming off of that one, just because it's a bigger footprint itself. Sure. After that, we're gonna slide into the blades. Okay, so less forgiving. Bokey SM8, um, MG3 from uh, TaylorMade. And then <laughs> we've also got Callaway, which I threw a little outlier in there. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has steel shafts, but I'm throwing a graphite in. See if we can't get a little bit more spin on that. Okay. Okay. And then I got a personal favorite of mine, the Betonardi series, who you know is in the bag for me. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the softest feeling wedges and one of the higher spinning wedges on the market as well. So it should be a great test today. Nice, nice. We have not done, I don't think maybe any Betonardi wedge I testing on here. It's been rare it. if at all. So I'm mm -hmm. very excited to have that in the mix here. So yeah. um, kind of go through again here. And I know you mentioned that graphite shaft here for the Cali briefly, yep. but go through some the shafts and kind of uh, how that's going to factor into the test. Sure. So everybody else, you know, like besides Callaway is going to be in their stock steel uh, wedge flex. So KBS weight wise is 125 there. Okay. Everybody else generally is around that S200 weight. So weight wise, we shouldn't really see any tolerances there. Okay. Should be pretty darn straight. Um, I did go and put them all on the loft to lie machine too. So they're all 64 <laughs> or standard on the lie and 52 on the loft. Uh, bounce structure is all kind of the lower side as well because I'm shallow going into the ball. Lengthwise, they're all standard as well. So really, it's going to be head to head using the same golf ball. So nice. I think I've, I've got a favorite picked out for me, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Absolutely. And uh, I think we'll go, let's go with maybe four shots with each. We'll maybe kind of maybe pick the three best and okay. we'll see what the test tells us here. But uh, always, it's always interesting to see this, how the spin differentiates on trackmen with wedges because there right. are some differences that come up. Big so, time, big um, time. Are you ready to hit some shots here, Let's Danny? do it, let's do it. All right, so Danny, like you mentioned, uh, I think we're gonna start with kind of the most forgiving here and then kind of go all, all the way down here. Sure, sure, let's do it. All right, so we got RTX Zip Core from Cleveland here. Cleveland. Oh yeah, that's a good ball. Solid. Oh, the club twirl. <laughs> the ball speed was hot there. There's that forgiveness piece. Just a little miss hit there. Big time. Two in a row. Eh. Meh. That wasn't so bad. No. So the Cleveland RTX Zip Core, what do you think about the feel of that one? Because you, um, like you mentioned kind of a more aimed at forgiveness wedge than true, the ones. True, true. Uh, feel wise for me, it's a little different. I'm used to playing something a lot, um, kind of a lot softer off okay. the club face, more okay. of a full forged wedge where this is more kind of a cast material. Okay. Um, sole design, I really didn't get along with that. It's one of the wider sole bounces that we're testing today too. So he kind of saw me bouncing before coming into the ball sure. first. So, but ball speed, I know that one is not going to be touched, especially that, what was it, you 97? Think so? Like was the hottest yeah, you out did, there. Yeah, you did hit one, uh, let's see here, ball speed. Yeah, you got 97.6. So yeah. you, don't, you don't think that one's going to be touched today? I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll, so. Fi we'll find out here. Let's get on, uh, let's go to the TaylorMade MG3. Okay. Ooh, I see that spin go up a little bit. 92, okay. Missed that. One-handed finish. <laughs> it ain't pretty. 
All right, so Danny, we've got the milled grind three up there now. How did that mm -hmm. compare in feel? Uh, feel point? wise, it's we're gaining on it. More soft, yeah. or softer, I guess. Yeah, it got a little bit better. Um, a little bit different visually since they want the raw face. Yeah, you know, that's completely different than where we were with the RTX. Mm -hmm. Smaller profile, heel to toe as well. Okay. Uh, but it definitely interacted with the sole kind of coming into the turf a little bit better with a little bit slimmer design there. Yeah. So can definitely tell that's more of your, I want to say player's wedge, but probably the one that's going to be more of a shot maker type. Yeah, one. yeah. It's not the most forgiving wedge out there, but it's not the least either. It's sure. got a right in between. Sure. So. Okay, well, let's get on to the next wedge here. We got the Bet Nerdy mm -hmm. HL, HLX 3.0. Well, you did it anyway. That's the new highest ball speed of the day. Showtime. Nice I don't think anything these. is going to beat the feel of that. You don't think so? Holy. Getting froggy now. A little thin. Just a little thin on that one? Yeah. Well, I think it actually kind of worked. So the HLX3.0, Danny, uh, a new leader. Yeah. Uh, we had, we touched, uh, did we touch 100 miles an hour? I think we did. We I touched think we 100 did, miles yeah. an hour ball speed. Yep. And you, one of the things you also mentioned was, uh, well, I, you already said the feel is kind of what you prefer because it's in your bag. Right. But you said also spin, that Betonardi's wedges were among the highest in spin and very Big comfortably time. higher than Zipcore and Milgrind 3 so far. Big so. Time. Yep. None of this is surprising to you. No, no. This was my kind of secret pick before we even got going. Yeah. Not only because I love Betty, but knowing the product and, you know, hitting it, testing it myself. Right. So. Because you, I mean, you were in the same scenario. You were trying to figure out the wedges that right. were going to be in your bag. And, right. Um, right. Here's, I mean, yeah, cause clearly you know, we should be having more Bet Nardi wedge, you know, attention on our absolutely. channel. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, we should. So, no one other than Danny probably to help us out in that department. But right, uh, pretty good. I mean, it's not like you're swinging like ultra fast. You know, with no. the the HLX 3.0, it's four tenths amount an hour faster compared to the Zipcore. Yep. You're just, you know, this ball speed went up four miles an hour, and then spin is also higher. Yeah. So, and it's also you know the well almost the most consistent in terms of spin too. So. Pretty good. Bet Nardi at HLX 3.0. Mm -hmm. uh, how about Titleist Vokey SM8 now? Okay. Okay. Pretty good. Good start. Oh, yeah. That was ripped. Flushed, as they say. <laughs> that is like in the hole. <laughs> Another good swing. All right, the Voki SM8. How does that feel now compared to kind of the other three that you've hit so far? Uh, definitely not as soft compared okay. to Betty. Like I said, I don't think anybody's going to touch that, mm -hmm. at least for me personally. Yeah. But uh, I just felt like I was catching things a little bit thin with this, which also promote a little bit firmer field too. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, sure. You know, switching from the black head from Betty back to that Tour Chrome. A little bit different look to it, but otherwise, I think it showed pretty well. I'd be interested to see the spin. My mm -hmm. guess is going to be a little bit lower, just right out of the bat. It's uh, kind of fallen in the category with the zip, RTX Zipcore and Milgrind 3, right yep. around that 8900 range. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously lower than HLX 3.0. And I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested though, is the launch angle. I was here. just going to bring that up too. So, I mean, 20, that's well, 29, which is basically two degrees roughly higher than the others, which is yeah. interesting. And you also mentioned that you may be catching it low on the face. Yeah. And it yeah. was still launching. So right. that's something to note, I guess, for the SM8 there. Yeah. I mean, that's where all the weight is with this. It's kind of lower and almost behind the head itself, mm -hmm. you know, with them. So it's very, very good. Um, when I was doing testing, this was number two. So I'm not surprised to see okay. kind of the numbers there. You know, me being a player that needs spin, like right. my irons being weak. That's why I gravitated towards Betty mm -hmm. for feel and spin as well. Right. So well, let's uh, go to our kind of our experiment club here. Yeah. The Jaws MD5 with a graphite shaft. Can you kind of go over that club one more, or that shaft, excuse me, one more time here and kind sure. of how maybe you expect it to be different? 
Well, I mean, from a weight perspective, it's massively different, mm -hmm. right? It's graphite, it's 125 in weight roughly with the steel shafts that we've been testing with, and now we're knocking it down to 80, okay? So dramatically lighter, but graphite, they make the walls a lot tighter or more narrow, so it can play a little bit stiffer as well. So swing speed might come up, um, strike location might vary a little bit now okay. because it's on the light sure. side for me, but I'd be interested to see if we can't gain a little bit more spin than kind of the bottom three there. I kind okay. of nudged this closer to Bettinardi. So you're kind of thinking spin-wise, um, this will kind of fall here. I'll try to, yeah. So this will kind of fall in between SM8 and the HLX 3.0. Yeah. Kind of just yeah. based on having that kind of lighter shaft, you'll get more speed with the swing and in yep. theory then generate more spin. Yeah, the softer tip section should always help with that okay. too, right? All right, well, let's see if uh, the, hypo the hypothesis is correct. There's that strike varying a little bit. Oh, that was good. That was good. Okay. Oh. One more? Yeah. Kind of all over the place with this a little bit lighter weight, which was yeah. expected. Oh. And that's normal, you know. That felt really good. Yeah. Well, let's let's look at the numbers here. How about give me that uh, the feel on the on the club at impact, kind of like mm -hmm. is there a you know with the Jaws MD5 and how they've constructed their club head? How's that sure. feel compared to the others? Yeah, off the club head, it felt really really good. I mean, when you pair it with a graphite shaft, you know, feel isn't going to get any better than mm -hmm. that. But you know, one of the things we talked about was where I was going to strike on the club face. Yeah. That would probably be the biggest dispersion out of all of them. Sure. Um, it just, it was a little bit harder to feel where the wedge was during the swing. Okay. So yeah, like, which is shaft related. Yeah, I think a little bit heavier graphite could have you know, been quite a bit better. Like okay. the MCI from um, Fujikura would be pretty good. Okay. But overall, I mean, looking at the numbers, or my club speed was, was that the fastest so far? Yes. 83. Well, was the fastest, which we uh, expected there. Okay. Yep. So then, we'll kind of just, how about, we'll uh, expand the numbers here and we'll sure. just kind of go by, uh, go on, look at this here. But we've got, we'll just kind of go, you know, club speed, fastest is Jaws MD5. We've talked about the, the shaft used for that. Yep. Uh, but it was not the highest ball speed. It's actually in the middle of the pack ball speed. Yep. HLX 3.0, highest ball speed. That's the one where, you actually touched uh, 100 miles an hour right here. Um, and so because of that, you're able to get that highest ball speed total. Mm -hmm. And then Volky Estimate was also up there. Um, Smash Factor, most efficient with the HLX 3.0. Yep. Uh, and then the launch angle was the other piece we talked about here too, which was the SM8 and then also the Jaws MD5 yeah. launching higher than the others. Do you think the, the Jaws having a kind of a higher launch angles, you know, help being helped with the, the shaft there at all? Or 100%, not? Yeah. 100%, yeah. Yeah, anything with a softer tip is gonna help promote a little bit higher flight too, okay. right? Where that club's kind of lagging a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not surprised by that. I am surprised that Vokey was the highest. Um, be, <clears throat> but other than that, I mean, spin wise, I was wrong. I was flat out wrong uh, on that, yeah. which is fine. <laughs> I, love Backing up. <laughs> <laughs> I love when that happens, I mean. Well, that's interesting actually, is how consistent it was staying low too, Yeah, which is, Something. Even though I was uh, all over the face. And it could be just a, maybe, you, you were talking a lot about the shaft, it could be just the characteristic of the club face and the club head. Absolutely. That was maybe keeping it down. Maybe yeah. it's just a lower spinning wedge compared to the others out there. Yeah. I mean, um, but, I mean, there was a clear most spinning wedge in this test anyway, a yeah. 52 degree full swing, do we which have, was the um, HLX 3.0. Do we have dynamic loft up? So dynamic loft, we got mm -hmm. it over here. Well, that's a good one to, to look at here. So. The highest dynamic loft was the Jaws MD5, mm -hmm. which I believe was probably expected. Yeah. Uh, Bokey SM8, interesting that the HLX 3.0 was the lowest dynamic loft. Yeah, it was the lowest dynamic loft or how much loft you show at impact. That's what right. that is effectively. Mm -hmm. So even though that was the lowest or I showed the less loft, it was the highest spinning of the which as well. That's interesting too. So that's major props. Because in theory, lower dynamic loft would generate lower spin. True, true. But, but again, we've been wrong before. 
Well, <laughs> HLX 3.0 is very comfortably the highest spinning wedge here. Like 100%. 600 RPM here. 100%. Which is, and it's fascinating because the other four are, you know, right next to each other in spin. You know, very comparable. So yep. ah, that's, that's fascinating. And looking at distance, I mean, you're hitting a 52 degree wedge with all of them. So it's pretty, you know, expected that they'll all be pretty close in distance. And they were mm -hmm. within 100 and, you know, what, 117 to 120 carry distance for all of them. Yeah. So yeah. that part's kind of expected, but height wise, the highest was the Evoki SM8 getting mm -hmm. over hundred feet. Also the steepest uh, landing angle also with Jaws MD5 in the 55 range too. Yeah. So lowest overall height by a long shot was the MD3 by over 10 feet. Yeah, actually that's fascinating too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So interesting. There's some takeaways here from this test here. Big time. Danny, that Big was, time. so, HLX3, again, not a lot of attention on our channel. Mm -hmm. A lot of spin, though. Right. And some speed, too. That yeah. was surprising. So, I am i don't know. I mean, clearly, we need to, you know, focus more on that in the future. Absolutely. Um, you know, for players that, that need spin, right, especially mm -hmm. if they're making a transition to a higher lofted iron set, they want to promote that spin to keep every distance the same there. You know, going into the Betonardi or at least giving it a fair shake. It might go in a lot more players' bags than what you yeah. expect. No, it's, I mean, you're right. I mean, it doesn't get the, you know, the, it's not the, the popularity or the, I guess, the awareness that, you know, right. your Vokies and your, right. your tailor made middle grind and things like that. But, uh, and then looking at the map here, too, one thing I did want to point out the consistency of distance that you had with your Voki SM8 shots here. Mm -hmm. That's another thing to point out. Um, obviously, with the HLX 3.0, it was pretty good, too. So a couple of things to note, you know, obviously when you're looking at wedge, you're looking at consistency. Yeah. Because these are scoring clubs trying to hit that, you know, the most consistent shot as possible. Distance wise, SM8 was really good here. Yep. HLX 3.0 also very good. So Yeah. But again, you know, we brought up kind of the forgiveness piece of it. When you zoom in on kind of the zip core, there right, you go. everything is going the same direction. Yeah. Right. It's not going both ways. So those miss hits are still yeah. traveling in the direction. Stabilizing that club had a little bit of impact. That's, Absolutely. that's a good point too. Absolutely. So a lot, I mean, golfers are going to take a lot from this, uh, mm -hmm. learning a lot for sure. I learned a lot just by Good. Good. looking at this. So, uh, but uh, as always, wedge fitting and having the right wedges in your bag is very important. Yes. Obviously, you know that more than anybody. So, yeah. uh, golfers, we encourage you to stop in a second swing, talk to someone like Danny, and we'll help you out and get the right wedges in your bag. We'll help let you hit a variety of shots here in a tour van fitting, uh, hit a variety of clubs and uh, see how they feel, see how they perform for your game. Uh, and, We'll throw in the HLX 3.0 as well, mm -hmm. if that's something you're interested in after this video. I think yep. there might be some that uh, will do that. So, Absolutely. Danny, thanks for joining, providing Always. your f feedback and insight today. This was yep. really good. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks for having me.